By the time Muhammad, peace be upon him, was 25, he was famous for his honesty. He was respected by everyone, even the elders of Mecca. The purity of his nature increased with the years. It seemed he had an inner knowledge that other people did not have. He believed in one God creator of the world and he worshipped him with all his heart and with all his soul. Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the finest of his people, the most kind, truthful and reliable person in Mecca. He was known among Quraysh as the trustworthy, Allah Amin, because of the good qualities Allah had given him. He spent many quiet hours in a cave in Mount Hira, not far from Mecca, thinking about Allah. Among Quraysh was a respected and wealthy woman named Khadija. She was involved in trade and on hearing of Muhammad's reputation, sent for him and asked him to take her goods and trade with him in Syria. Muhammad, peace be upon him, agreed and left for Syria with one of Khadija's caravans. With him went her slave, Maysara, and they spent a great deal of time talking together. Maysara soon came to admire Muhammad, peace be upon him. He thought he was quite different from all the other men of Quraysh. Two unusual events took place during this journey which puzzled Maysara very much. The first happened when they stopped to rest near the lonely home of a monk. Muhammad, peace be upon him, sat under a tree while Maysara was busy with some work. The monk came up to Maysara and asked, Who is the man resting under the tree? One of Quraysh, the people who guard the Kaaba, said Maysara. No one but a prophet is sitting beneath this tree, replied the monk. The second event occurred on the journey back to Mecca. It happened at noon when the sun is at its hottest. Maysara was riding behind Muhammad, peace be upon him, and as the sun grew hotter he saw two angels appear above Muhammad, peace be upon him, and shield him from the sun's harmful rays. The trading was very successful and Muhammad, peace be upon him, made more profit for Khadija than she had ever received before. When they arrived back in Mecca Maysara told Khadija everything about the trip and what he had noticed about Muhammad's character and behavior. Khadija was a widow in her forties and as well as being rich and highly respected she was also very beautiful. Many men wanted to marry her but none of them suited her. When she met Muhammad, peace be upon him, however, she thought he was very special. She sent a friend to ask Muhammad, peace be upon him, why he was not married. Muhammad, peace be upon him, said that it was because he had no money, to which the friend replied, supposing a rich, beautiful and noble lady agreed to marry you? Muhammad, peace be upon him, wanted to know who that could be. The friend told him it was Khadija. Muhammad, peace be upon him, was very happy because he greatly respected Khadija. He went with his uncles, Abu Talib and Hamza, to Khadija's uncle, and asked his permission to marry her. The uncle gave his permission and soon after, Muhammad, peace be upon him, and Khadija were married. Their marriage was a joyful one and Muhammad, peace be upon him, and Khadija were well suited. Their life together, however, was not without some sadness. They were blessed with six children, two sons, and four daughters. Sadly their firstborn, a son called Kasim, died shortly before his second birthday, and their last child, also a son, only lived for a short time. Happily, their four daughters Zainab, Rugaya, Um Thum, and Fatima all survived. For a few years, Muhammad, peace be upon him, lived a calm and quiet life as a merchant in Mecca. His wisdom benefited many people. One such time was when Quraysh decided to rebuild the Kaaba. It was a difficult decision for them because they had to knock it down before rebuilding it and the people were afraid that Allah might be angry with them for knocking down his sanctuary. At last one of the wise old men of Quraysh decided to begin, then everybody followed him. They worked until they reached down to the first foundation that Abraham had built. As soon as they began to remove the stones of this foundation, however, the whole of Mecca began to shake. They were so afraid that they decided to leave these stones where they were and build on top of them. Each tribe brought stones and they built the Kaaba up until they reached the place where the black stone was to be set. They then began to argue about who should have the honor of carrying the black stone and lifting it to its place in one of the corners of the Kaaba. They almost came to blows but fortunately, one of the men offered a solution. He suggested that they should be guided by the first person to enter the place of worship. They all agreed and as Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the first to enter everyone was pleased, because they all trusted him. They told him the cause of the argument and he asked them to bring a large cloak. They did as he asked, and after spreading the cloak on the ground he placed the black stone in the center of it. Then he asked a man from each tribe to hold one edge of the cloak and together to raise it to the height where the stone should be seen. When this was done, he took the stone off the cloak and put it into place himself. This story shows how al Quraysh respected and trusted Muhammad, peace be upon him, and how, by his wisdom and good sense, he was able to keep the peace.